Hey guys, John coming to you from Evolve Custom Rod Shop, showing you my new how-to. Um, I'm making a, a carbon fiber skinned grip. As you can see here, I'm speeding this video up because there's a lot of there's a lot of time in this video, <clears throat> and I'd rather just show you guys what I'm doing. So I'm marking my ends with the parting tool. I'm rounding everything out with the round nose. Taking a quick measurement so I have a starting point and once I have that starting point I'll work from there. Now the only thing different between what I have here and mine is I'm going to actually build the winding check right into the grip. So I'm taking my round nose chisel and basically just smoothing everything out. It doesn't take much effort. Um, what I do with my parting tool is I basically I'm setting the depth so I know where and how far to cut. Um, once I have my depth, um, it's really pretty simple. This stuff, this is a six pound density foam core. Um, you can either make it yourself or you can um, purchase them. You see I'm marking here. I'm trying to get the depth. Once I have the depth where I need it to be, um, I basically just connect the dots. And it's also not a bad idea every once in a while to actually, um, you'll see here I put my hand on the grip. I want to make sure it feels good. Granted, it's going to get thicker once you add the carbon fiber to it. And the uh, I use several layers of epoxy. So now I'm coming back to the back end. This is to make my uh, fighting butt really pretty simple. I want the the widest part to be as wide as the grip. And then I just taper it up. Nothing special, nothing fancy. I do want to keep it connected to the front part. It'll make it go together so much easier in the end. I'm going to do a quick sanding on it. Um, you know, nothing special, 220, just to smooth it out a little. We're not trying to go for glass-like finish here. This is foam. Um, trim off the front. Fix the uh, front nose piece, a little sanding. Sometimes it's better if you just sand as opposed to using your chisel because you can take too much off very quickly. Cutting the back off. But again, I'm keeping these two connected. I'm keeping the front and the back connected. You can see here it's all one piece. The rounded front will be a built-in winding check right into the grip. So it'll be seamless right into the rod blank. What I'm using here is uh, carbon fiber sleeving. Now this one actually has to, happens to be carbon fiber and fiberglass. What that's going to allow me to do is put a color underneath the... Uh, the sleeving and the color will show through see here I'm taking a measurement cut it long don't cut it short um, you're better off being long than short you see here I have some pre-made tubes at certain diameters um, this is one inch sleeving so I'm going to use my one inch pre-made tube and I finished it with fiberglass um, and what that does is allows me to um, put the sleeving on before I glue it up. I can straighten the sleeving out. I can make it make it basically look perfect. So when you finally put the epoxy on it, it will come out perfect. Um, you see the bends in there. You just push it together, straighten it out. What this will allow you to do is make sure you don't have the carbon fiber going all over the place once you cinch it down on the epoxy because once the epoxy is laid down and you put this stuff on it's not moving once I'm happy and I know I got it straight I'll set that off to the side and I will just leave it on there now you can get full carbon fiber you can get carbon fiber Kevlar you can get all fiberglass sleeving. 
Solar composite sells all this stuff. Now, one note with the Kevlar is you want to leave it at least 24 hours on that rod tube before ever putting it on your finished product because it needs to take shape. That Kevlar is really sturdy. You'll end up with creases in it if you don't do that. What I'm doing here is I'm adding 4 cc's of standard pro coat epoxy it's a one-to-one -one ratio this is a standard epoxy i use on all my rod guides the only difference with this is i will be adding color to this i'm using an electric blue metallic you can find pigments all over the internet local art stores you can find them at michael's you can get liquid you can get powdered um, i got these powdered pigments through an old vendor um, they're no longer selling it anymore he's only building custom rods now he's also got a video out there on how to do this So if you notice, I'm making two things of epoxy. One's going to be four cc's of colored. One's going to be three cc's of clear. The advantage to that is once I put the colored epoxy down on the base and I put the fiberglass over it, the carbon fiber will still be black. The fiberglass will be blue. And then I'll coat it with clear epoxy that way it doesn't change the color of the black carbon fiber I got a mixing mixing stick basically put it in a power mixer if you don't have a power epoxy mixer you can do it by hand uh, power epoxy mixers are worth every penny the first time you use them so what I'm doing here is I'm putting on a nice thick coat of the blue epoxy I want to make sure I get a hundred percent coverage taking my time getting all the nooks and crannies you know and I just got my lathe spinning at a moderate pace not very fast as you can see here I sped up the video um, I'm getting in all the nooks and crannies I'm making sure I get on the ends make sure I got good coverage on the ends because that's just as important as the tops and bottoms so I got my lace base layer here I've used all four seasons of epoxy it's completely gone I probably could have even used more But I know I got 100% coverage. Now what I'm going to do is keep the rod lathe spinning and put on my latex gloves. This next part is going to get a little messy and you need to make sure you have gloves on. Or you may never get the epoxy off your hands. <clears throat> So now I take my tube that I made that I have my sleeving over and I just slide it right down the tube. Now it's kind of out of frame here. I'm going to show you guys again how I did this in frame. And I apologize for having it out of frame. Basically I'm just taking my uh, foam core that I made that I had glassed over. <clears throat> and I'm just sliding it right on the end of the mandrel. <clears throat> slide the sleeving down and you're done. Then you just work work the sleeving onto the epoxy. There is no epoxy on this one, so it's not going to stick. So as you can see here, I'm just working it in, working it in. Eventually, I'll put it back on the lathe. I just want to make sure that carbon fiber and fiberglass is 100 percent saturated 
this is when you do not want to have any dry spots. You can see how the fiberglass turned blue and the carbon fiber is still black. I'm not worried about drips at this point. That's why I don't have the lathe going. What I'm doing now is taking some uh, more time to make sure everything's saturated. I'm then going to grab my zip ties, which I have already pulled out. And basically go to the low spots. And had I cut this a little longer, the front would have been much easier to cinch down. But needless to say, I cut it at the exact size I needed. So like I said before, cut a little bit longer. It'll help you. Now if you notice, I'm putting one at the very base. And then I'm putting one right on the top of the end. And what this will do is make sure I got a nice tight right angle there. Um, very important. Cut all the ends off. And I'll put one more zip tie on the front for good measure because I didn't cut it long enough. I would only need one zip tie had I cut this long enough. All right. Now I'm taking my clear epoxy and I'm going over everything with clear epoxy. This way I don't color the black carbon fiber, yet I know that everything's 100% saturated. And I will use all three cc's of this uh, other bit of epoxy. Again, all pro code stuff's one-to-one, -one, so it's real simple to mix up. And once I know I got everything used, I will grab my dryer, put it on dry, and start it spinning. I'll then grab my torch and ever so slightly heat up the epoxy to make sure any bubbles are dissipated out. I generally don't have any bubbles at this point, um, but you can get them because the amount of epoxy you're putting on there can create bubbles. So I just do this as a precautionary. You don't want to get it too hot to where it starts smoking, but you just want to make it a little bit more viscous so the bubbles can work themselves out. And we just let it wait. Come back next day. I will take all the zip ties off. You can see I just had enough on there to cinch down the front. This will make my winding check. I'm not worried about the, the end because that will either be covered in thread or else it'll just kind of disappear as I ream out the foam to fit the fly rod. You can see here I just nip it off and peel it off. And it comes off fairly simply. I imagine if you put way too much epoxy over top of it, you might have a little bit harder time, but I try not to coat the zip ties to in too much epoxy so this doesn't happen. I just make sure I get good coverage on all the material. Again, I'm feeling it. Make sure it feels good. Now what I'm going to do is grab a uh, Scotch-Brite. And what I'm trying to do is just rough it up. I'm just trying to take the sheen off of it. That way my next coat of epoxy will go on better. Just a fair warning. Sanding carbon fiber puts out some really bad stuff. Make sure if you're sanding, make sure you're wearing a mask. That stuff will get everywhere. It's also not a bad idea to do it outside. 
So I'm just taking the sheen off here. Once the sheen is taken off, I will then go ahead and put some more epoxy on. If you want at this point, you can add metal flake to your epoxy. Um, I usually wait till it's on the rod before I add any metal flake. And the only reason for that is I, I want to see what it looks like on the rod to see if it would look good with metal flake. But I just have uh, the epoxy mixed up. And I'm putting it on nice and thick. Kind of just moving, moving the epoxy around with the brush. Again, getting the ends. Making sure I got good coverage everywhere. Sometimes it also helps if you stop it, stop the lathe and go left to right. Sometimes that'll fill any voids. Um, sometimes it works better keeping the lathe spinning. When you got a thick coat of epoxy on there, though, you need to make sure you keep that spinning at some sort of RPM. That way you don't get any drips or any buildup. And remember, at this point now, it doesn't have to be perfect. You know, we can sand it and put another coat on. The one thing is, with carbon fiber, you can sand deep into the carbon fiber without messing it up. With the fiberglass, you start running into problems if you sand really deep into the uh, fiberglass. Put this thing on dry, grabbing my heat source again. And now I'm moving it a little bit closer because I want to make sure that I get all the bubbles out of this epoxy. You're more likely to get bubbles in this coat. But even if you do, you can sand them right out and put on another coat. It's not that big of a deal, but if you can avoid getting them, it makes everything easier. Guys, if you have any questions about any of this, feel free to ask it in the comments. I'll be more than happy to answer them. See, I'm taking a little bit more time with this, and the reason for that is I have a thick layer of epoxy on a finished product. The other thing is, too, when you put this coat of epoxy on, there's lots of, lots of bumps in the carbon fiber grip, and that can lead to bubbles. So I'm just taking my time, making sure everything's done. Got everything nice and warm. Wait another day, and we're back. And as you can see here, I'm shining some light on there. It's nice and shiny. It's got a real nice finish to it. It feels fantastic in the hand. You see my winding check there is built right into the uh, grip. What I'm using here is a coping saw with a hacksaw blade on it, so a metal cutting blade essentially, or a fine tooth blade. And what I'm going to do now is separate the butt cap from the foregrip. I bring my lathe up to speed and I just gradually go down there. Once you get through the carbon fiber and fiberglass, it goes right through the foam. And now you got them all separated. Pretty straightforward. Now, in another video, I'm going to be showing you how I do my inletting and how I set up my um, fighting butt for the fly rod. I will pull this off. You see a little twist, and she'll come right off the mandrel. Like I said, sometimes it'll stick a little. Not a big deal. Looks good. Feels good. Now you see the end there where it's a little bit protruded. That'll go away once I make the inlet for my fly grip, fly uh, handle. The real seat. I'm going to actually show you right now. I'm going to be using an Alps Triangle. 
real seat. This is going to be an eight weight salt water rod, so I want to use a really heavy duty, really nice real seat. You see, I'll I'll create the inlet so that fits in there perfectly. Hey guys, make sure you share this video if you like it. Give me a like. Leave me a comment if you have any questions. Feel free to ask. And again, man, thanks for watching. I'll have more videos to come.